What is going on, gamers? It is Patrick back with yet another one, and this is a special video because this feature that Clay just came out with is, in my opinion, the most important feature they've came out with to date. I, I really can't express to you how excited I am about it. It is probably, in my opinion, going to revolutionize the way we do sales completely. And I don't say that in other videos. I, I For people who are you know loyal soldiers of the channel, they know good and well. I don't hype things up unless I think they're actually cool. And this is really, really, really cool. I implore you to watch the entire video. And I didn't want to be the one talking about this feature because, you know, when Thomas Edison invented the light bulb, they didn't go to his employees to talk to, to talk about it, right? It was, they wanted to go to the inventor himself. And so I decided to have Adam, who actually created Clagent, the mastermind behind this incredible tool. And I wanted him to talk about it. So he's going to give you a rundown about what clay is, how it works, and just how powerful it can really be. And I won't spoil it too much, but it's pretty much just having a, an employee at your fingertips. Like it does research, it writes emails. It's unbelievable. I mean, it's, he really took the AI agent and just supercharged it. So I'm really excited um, to have Adam talk to you about this. And I hope you're just as excited as I am. And uh, yeah, without further ado, I'm just going to have him hop into it. Hey guys, this is going to be a demo of the Clagent, which is the, uh, as it sounds like, Clay agent. Um, so it's this AI feature that is going to be able to get data um, from online. So it's able to search Google, visit websites, uh, visit more websites until it gets you the data that you need, um, or it, it's able to summarize sort of what you want. Um, so yeah, to, to access it, you go ahead and find it in the Enrich Data tab. It's called Clagent and it's in beta right now. So you have to be on the beta to get it. Um, and you have to use your own OpenAI API key. It's recommended to actually upgrade your OpenAI key as soon as you get it. So there's a um, thing you can do, which is search up rate limit increase um, with your OpenAI API key. Um, and I would request to fill out that form because then you'll be able to get a lot faster results uh, with your own key. Um, and so you just, you're gonna have to pay for your own open AI consumption for the time being. Cool. So let's let's give an example of sort of how it works here. So let's say we wanted to find some data that you know you can't find in our integration, some more obscure data points. So something like let's say we have this company domain clay and we want to find out what the pricing model is. Um, we don't have something in our integrations to do that. So let's ask Clayton to do that. Okay, pricing. Uh, and then one thing that's helpful here is to tell the Clayton pricing page uh, exactly what to do. Um, so what it says here basically is might help to tell me what steps you would probably take to solve this. Think about sort of what you would do to solve that task. And then I would put that in this mission here. Um, so the mission is supposed to be pretty simple. You don't want to make it too large. Um, don't make it too complicated. Just simple uh, as possible is actually best. Um, and so while that's running, let me show something else Clayton can actually do, which is add a output schema. And so an output schema is the data in the cell, like the structure of the data that's being outputted. Um, and so you can force it to return in a certain way. So let's say instead of getting just one uh, result that you know tells us all the different pricing models, um, let's say we wanted to talk about, we wanted to get every single pricing model that they have. So um, let's say pricing model one, this is the cheapest pricing tier offered. Pricing model two, this is the second cheapest pricing tier offered. This will do. Um, I'll show in a second. Is basically it'll just force the cell to return in a certain way. Um, here we're actually going to get two pricing pricing models. Um, but the cool thing is it's and I didn't have to. I could have put spaces in here. But um, here you can see pricing model one and pricing model two were are their own keys here. So now you can see one hundred and thirty nine per month, three hundred and forty nine per month. Um, if we went to play.com slash pricing, that is correct. That is are two pricing tiers. So that's actually really accurate. It hasn't actually been trained to look on that or anything. It doesn't know that it is, it is a clay owned agent. So it's just great. Um, 
Here it says the clay price model clay.com starts from 112 to 800. So I think this is most our most expensive plan. I think this might be if you bill annually. Um, so yeah, that's that's a pretty good result. Um, and as you can see here, when we don't specify the output schema, it just returns in this general like result and it's just a whole bunch of text. So if you want to force it to return in a certain way, that's when you go ahead and use this output schema. So this is a really great example uh, built by a user for their own real use case, which I asked them if I could show you guys, um, which basically goes and finds a bunch of data about a bunch of restaurants. Um, so we've got these all these restaurant brands, McDonald's, Chick-fil-A, et cetera. And this user wanted to know things like, what is the POS provider that this company is using? How many locations are in the United States? What's the average unit volume? So the sales per year per, I guess, franchise or per restaurant. Um, and these are things that wouldn't be super easy to find just as generic data points. You would require a lot of manual searching. Um, and so as you can see, this, this user said that they took a while to figure out the prompting. Um, so they sort of have all this uh, custom prompting here, which is, search Google first, then search blog posts, news articles, et cetera, et cetera, only include the name. And so as you can see, they, they did a really great job of figuring out um, what the steps are that you would tell it to, to solve the task. So um, here it says, if you can identify information from Scrape Hero, treat that as the most reliable source. In this AUV one, it says you should check QSR magazine and treat that as a reliable source. And then, you know, if it returns in thousands, then the answer is in millions. Um, so yeah, th this is sort of a great example. And I'll go ahead and add one more that I think would be fun just to show, uh, which is like, find example of a holiday menu item this. Um, and let's see what it does. So yeah, you can really find creative data points that I think you wouldn't really know how to get otherwise, or it would use some combination of cleverly searching Google, scraping websites, et cetera. Um, and so Clay McDonald's, okay, there we go. McDonald's is the holiday pie. Wendy's, the pumpkin spice frosty, iced ginger milk oat milk chai, famous bowls, limited edition holiday buckets, as you can see here, peppermint chip milkshake, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, I mean, there's there's some really creative things it'll do, and it'll sort of tell you how it actually figured that out. So um, in this case, you know, it'll say, I went to the menu, and then in the menu, I found this, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so yeah, please, excited to see what you guys will do with this. Um, and yeah, please drop feedback below.